we have to ask the very basic question of what is life? I actually don't think that's the right question to ask. It took me a long time to get there, right? So cross it out. Yeah, (laughs) cross it off your list. It's wrong. Uh, Next question. Um, No, no, no. no. I mean, I think it has an answer, but I think the part of the problem is, um, you know, most of the places in science where we get really stuck is because we don't know what questions to ask, Um, and so you can't answer a question if you're asking the wrong question. Um, And I think uh, the way I think about it is obviously I'm interested in what life is. So I'm being a little cheeky when I say that's the wrong question to ask. That's exactly like the the question that's like the core of my existence. But um, but I think the way of framing that is what is it about our universe that allows features that we associate life to be there? Um, And so really what I guess when I'm asking that question, what I'm after is an explanatory framework for what life is, right? And so most people, they try to go in and define life and they say, well, life is, uh, say, a self-reproducing chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. That's a very popular definition for life. Um, Or life is something that metabolizes and eats. Um, That is not how I think about life. What I think about life is there are principles and laws that govern our universe um, that we don't understand yet. Um, that have something to do with um, how information interacts with the physical world. I don't know exactly what I mean even when I say that um, because we don't know these rules. Um, But it's a little bit like, um, I like to use analogies. Give me time to be like a little long-winded for a second, even in as I, um, but um, but sort, sort of like if you look at the history of physics, for example, this is like, so we are in the period of the development of thought on our planet where we don't understand what we are yet, right? Um, There was a period of thought in the history of our planet where we didn't understand what gravity was. Um, And we didn't understand, for example, that planets in the heavens, you know, were actually planets or that they operated by the same laws that we did. Um, And so there has been this sort of progression of getting a deeper understanding of explaining basic phenomena like, I'm not going to drop the cup, I'll drop the water bottle. There you go. Okay, that fell, right? But why did that fall? Um, <laughs> this is why I'm a theorist, not an experimentalist. <laughs> that could have gone wrong in so many ways. I know it could have, especially if I did the cup and it smashed. Anyway, <laughs> um, so um, so if you think you take this view that there's sort of some missing principles, I associate them uh, to information, and what it, what the sort of feeling there is, there's some missing explanatory framework for how our universe works. And if we understood that physics, it would explain what we are. Um, It might also explain a lot of other features we don't associate to life. Um, And so it's a little like um, people accept the fact that gravity is a universal phenomena. Um, But when we want to study gravity, we study things like large scale, um, you know, galactic structures or black holes or planets. Um, If we want to understand information and how it operates in the physical world, we study intelligent systems or living systems because they are the manifestation of that physics. Um, And the fact that we can't see that clearly yet, or we don't have that explanatory framework, I think is just because we haven't been thinking about the problem deeply enough. But I feel like if you're explaining something, you're deriving it from some more fundamental property. And of course, um, I have to say I'm wearing my my physicist hat, so I have a, a huge bias of liking simple, elegant explanations of the universe that, um, you know, really are compelling. But I think um, one of the things that I've sort of maybe in some ways rejected my training as a physicist is that most of the elegant explanations that we have so far don't include us in the universe. And I can't help but think there's something really special about what we are, and there have to be some deep principles at play there. Um and so, so that's sort of my perspective on it. Now, when you ask me what life is, I have some ideas of what I think it is, but I think that we haven't gotten there yet because we haven't been able to see that structure. And it's and, and just to go back to the gravity example, it's a little like, you know, in ancient times, they didn't know, I was talking about stars and heavens and things, they didn't know those were, um, you know, governed by the same principles as that darned experiment. Here's mm-hmm. where I was going with it. Once you realize, like Newton did, that you know heavenly motions and earthly motions are governed by the same principles and you unify terrestrial and celestial motion, you get these more p- powerful ideas. Um, and I, th- I, I think where life is, is somehow unifying these abstract ideas of computation and information with the physical world, with matter, and realizing that there's some explanatory framework that's not physics and it's not computation, but it's something that's deeper. So answering the question of what is life requires deeply understanding something about the universe 
as information processing, the universe is computation. Sort like of. Something about, yeah. like would, uh, once you come up with an answer to what is life, will the words information and computation be in the paragraph? That no, answer? I don't think so. Oh, damn it. Okay. I know. It doesn't help, does it? I know. I, I hate, actually, I hate this about what I do because it's so hard to communicate, right? With right. words, like when you have words that are um, ideas that have historically described one thing and you're trying to describe something people haven't seen yet. Right. And the words just don't fit. So what? Uh, what's wrong? Is it too ambiguous, the word information? We could switch I, to binary if you want. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think it's binary either. Okay. Um, I think information is just loaded. I use it, so the other way I might talk about it is the physics of causation, but I think that's worse because causation is even more loaded word than um, information. So causation so is fundamental, you think? I do, yeah. And um, in some sense, I think the physics, so this is the really radical part. Some sense, like when I really think about it sort of most deeply, uh, what I think life is, is actually the physics of existence. What gets to exist and why? Um, and, you know, for simple elementary particles, that's not very complicated because the interactions are simple. But for things like, um, you know, you and me and human civilizations, um, you know, what comes next in the universe is really dependent on what came before. And there's a huge space of possibilities of things that can exist. And when I say information and causation, what I mean is, why is it that uh, cups evolved in the universe and not some other object that could deliver water and not spill it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. Uh, maybe it wouldn't be a cup, but um, but it's a huge, it, it, it's, um, you know, uh, you know, people talk about the space of things that could exist as being actually infinitely large, right? I don't know if I believe in infinity, um, but I do think that there is something very interesting about the problem of what exists in its relationship to life. So do you think this, the set of things that could exist is finite? So it's very large, but like if we were to think about the physics of existence, like how, how many shapes of mugs can there be? Like it is uh, <laughs> in the know. initial programming. <laughs> I should go to the math department for that. But it's <laughs> <laughs> so the, that's not a topology question. I just mean, uh, m maybe another way to ask is, what do you think is fundamental to the universe and what is emergent. So if existence, are we supposed to think of that as somehow fundamental, you think? So there's a couple of problems in physics that I think this is related to. One is why does mathematics work at describing reality so well? Um, and then there is this problem of we don't understand why the laws of physics are the way they are or why certain things get to exist or what put in place the initial condition of our universe, right? right. There's all of these sort of really deep and big problems and they they all um, indirectly are related, I think, to the same kind of thing that, um, you know, our physics is really good if you specify the initial condition at, at specifying a certain sequence of events, but it doesn't deal with the fact that other things could have happened, which is kind of an informational property, like a counterfactual property. Um, and it's not good at explaining... Uh, you know, this conversation right now. It's just, it. there are certain things that are outside the, the explanatory reach of current physics. And um, I think they require looking at it from a completely different direction. Um, and so I don't want to have to fine tune the initial condition of the universe to specify precisely all the information in this conversation. I think that's a ridiculous assertion. Um, but that's sort of like how people want to frame it when they talk about um you know, the standard model is sufficient if we had computing power to basically explain all of life and our existence. An interesting thing you said is the way we think about information and computation is by observing a particular kind of systems on earth mm -hmm. that exhibit something we think of as intelligence. But that's, that's like uh, looking at, I guess, the tip of an iceberg and we should be really looking at the fundamentals of like the iceberg, like, like, like what makes water and ice and 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 the chemistry that from which intelligence emerges yes, essentially yes. we can't just couple the information from the physics and i think that's what we've gotten really good at doing especially with um sort of the modern age where you know software is so abstracted um from hardware <laughs> Um, but the entire process of biological evolution has basically been built, like been building layers of increasing abstraction. And so it's really hard to see that physics in us, but it's much clearer to see it in molecules. Yeah, but I guess I'm trying to figure out what, what do you think are the best tools to look at it? What do you think? An open mind? Is that a tool? <laughs> 
What's the physics of an open mind? (laughs) (laughs) I think if we solve that, we'll solve everything. I'm saying an open mind because I think the biggest stumbling block um, to understanding sort of the things I've been trying to articulate or, and when I talk also with colleagues that are thinking deeply about these same issues is None of it is inconsistent with what we know. It's just such a radically different percept- perception of the way we understand things now that it's hard for people to get there. And in some ways, you have to almost forget what you've learned in order to learn something new, right? So I feel like most of my career trying to understand the problem of life has been variously forgetting and then relearning things that I learned in physics. And and I think you have to you have to have a capacity to learn things but then accept that things that you were you you learned might not be true um or or might need refinement or reframing um and the best way i can say that is just like with a physics education there are just certain things you're told in undergrad that are like facts about the world mm-hmm. and your physics professors never tell you that those facts actually emerge from a human mind right so we're taught to think about say the laws of physics for example mm-hmm. as this like autonomous thing that exists outside of our universe and tells our universe how it works. Yeah. Um, But the laws of physics were invented by human minds to describe things that are regularities in our everyday experience. Right. They don't exist autonomous to the universe. Right. So it's like turtles on top of turtles, but eventually gets to the human mind and then you have to explain the human mind with the turtles. Yes. So you you have to, it comes from humans, this this understanding, this simplification of the universe, these models. 